and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to go ahead and take a look at converting hair color today, specifically brunette to blonde, just because going from dark to lighter colored hair is much more difficult than taking lighter colored hair and styling it all kinds of different colors. And the technique that we're going to use, the series of adjustment layers we're going to use, you can really use to go in and convert hair to virtually any color under the sun, from bron uh, blonde to brunette, uh, from blonde to hot pink, from brunette to hot pink, I mean, or blue or green or whatever. You can do all kinds of different crazy things um, and just tweak hair color in general. It's, it's uh, kind of a cool series of uh, effects and it's just going to help you sort of gain understanding of what these different adjustment layers and things do um, and that, that's pretty much it. One of the things I do want to just give you a shout out about and kind of a disclaimer is you want some detail in the hair. The photograph that you're using and changing hair color, you, you're going to need some detail in the hair. This girl here, actually I'll shut off all of the blonde layers and you can see there's a fair amount of detail here in her hair. I can see shadows, I can see highlights and mid-tones in her hair. If you've got a photograph of somebody or yourself and the hair is just pitch black or completely blown out, there's not really any color there to change. It's just going to be the solid mass of color and there's no detail to show through the color. So that's just something to keep in mind. You want to find a good photograph where you can really you get detail in the hair. So with that in mind, the only other thing is getting a selection of the hair. I've already done that here. I have this kind of block black selection, which is a very rough selection. Um, but I got it. I just quickly ran over the hair with the quick selection tool and then used Photoshop CS5's new, right here, refine mask option, which is an excellent tool. Uh, I'm not going to do it, however, in this video. That would have to be another separate tutorial. And selecting, making a fairly complex selection such as this uh, it takes a little bit of time and effort and explaining. So we're not going to cover it here, but just know that you're going to want a selection of your hair. And this actually, I just did a very quick kind of rather not so great selection but it'll work for what we're doing. So let's get started. We're going to just simply use a series of adjustment layers and a mask, and that's it. And we're going to have transformed her hair to a blonde, or at least a, a pretty decent shade of blonde. Uh, there's a billion and a half different colors of hair. Uh, so let's just get started. I'm going to control click my selection layer, or you could go and you could load a selection if you have a selection somewhere, or control click a channel, or however you have your selection saved. And we're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, and the first adjustment layer we want is hue saturation. Now actually before I get that I just want to let you know I'm loading my selection first because when you have a selection loaded and you drop a layer mask or excuse me an adjustment layer on top of that it's going to automatically create a mask. It's only going to apply this adjustment layer within that selection that I just created so it's pretty important. Hue saturation and it's going to give me this little dialog whatever hit OK and you can see here ignore all this junk going on here our layers panel, we have our mask. The effect is not applied on any of the black areas. It's only applied on the white. So the first thing I actually want to do, just to kind of check up on my mask and make sure it's looking great, is I'm just going to boost the brightness way up. And you can see the edges of my mask, they're kind of rough. Um, and at this point, I could go in and I could kind of tweak them and adjust them a little bit if I wanted. However, I'm far too lazy to do that, and I don't want to waste you guys' time any more than I am already. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to set this back to zero, or about zero. And for our hue saturation adjustment layer, we want to tick on the colorize box. Once we tick on the colorize box, we can see her hair actually gets kind of this cool red shade. So right off the bat, we could, if we just wanted to give her kind of this funky maroon colored hair, boom, job well done. Uh, but we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give her kind of a yellowish orangish tone here. So around 60 hue works for me. I want to boost the saturation just a touch. So we're going to bring it up to about there. That looks pretty good, 35. And then we're also going to boost the lightness. Now. It looks really bad right now, but don't worry about that. We're going to layer on a series of effects, and a lot of times that's just what you have to do. You get get to a certain stage with one adjustment layer, don't try to push it too far, and then add another adjustment layer and build up the effect. It can take a little patience, and, and certainly you need to have a vision in your mind as you're, you're going about this kind of work. So there we go. This looks good for our first adjustment layer. We're going to go ahead and set this adjustment layer to a blend mode of screen and see what that does for us. Well, now that's looking a bit more natural right there. So we went from normal, which looks very washed out and muddled and kind of green, to the screen layer, which is actually starting to look a little more natural. Still not very blonde, though. We can definitely tell there was some serious digital ma manipulation done. So let's take it a step further. We're going to go ahead and add a layer adjustment layer levels that new layer. And again, I forgot to load my selection, so I'm just going to hit my delete key to delete that layer, and I'm going to load my selection. You can actually just control click your mask if you want. Either or will work at this point. And go layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and hit OK. And boom, we have our mask. Now what we want to do here is just bump up the contrast a little bit. So that's going to require us to drag the black slider in a little bit and the white slider in a little bit. 
shut the layer off, turn it on, you can see. I'm going to collapse my channels panel. It's kind of distracting me there. Uh, yeah, so we can shut that off, turn it on. We can see a little slight contrast boost, and actually it gives the appearance of a saturation boost as well. We will ignore that, though. And then we're going to give this a bump of red and a bump of blue. And basically, I just mean I'm going to push a little bit more red into this, and I'm going to push a little bit more blue into it. Pushing the red in sounds a little more obvious. So we're going to go to the red channel here. And with my mid-tone slider here, sliding this to the left adds red. You can see, whoa, we've got some crazy orange fire hair. Sliding it the other way adds cyan. So we're getting like a sea green or just, I don't know, mint green uh, color. We don't want that. So we're going to bump it over to the red, add a little bit of red. You can see, we're just uh, adding a little bit of color there. And then we're going to go down to the blue channel. And again, blue, if we pull it to the left, we're going to add blue. If we pull it to the right, we're going to add yellow. So you would think with blonde you want to add yellow, but that kind of makes the hair look mustardy, uh, if that is even a word. Uh, so we're going to pull it and add some blue, and you're going to see it really just takes that edge off of the blonde and makes it look much more natural. So just a drop of, whoa, that's way too blue. <laughs> that's actually kind of a cool effect, actually, a nice little retro blonde effect. Uh, I'm just going to drop it over, maybe like 1.25 or so, I don't know. Something like that looks good for now. And you can see her two layers in, we're, we're getting a pretty nice effect. It actually would look a little more convincing if my mask was a little nicer, but let's not focus on that right now. This one is done. We're going to move on to our next adjustment layer. Again, remembering to load our selection. Control-click that guy. And go Layer, Adjustment Layer, Levels again, and hit OK. And right off the bat, I just want to convert this adjustment layer to Screen, which is going to give me a nice punch of light. It's going to just brighten the whole thing up. I'm totally bleach blonde, actually way more than even bleach blonde. It's, it's starting to be washed out. We're losing detail um, and it, it doesn't look very good. Um, we're not in that part of Hollywood. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to boost the contrast here. Again, dragging that black and white slider in like so. And we're going to give this a bump of blue as well. I'll just slide that guy over a little bit. And we might want to reduce the opacity here a little bit. Let me just look and see what that looks like. Yeah, let's go ahead and just set the opacity to about 70. Again, depending on your image, you might want to you know, drop, the, drop or raise the opacity a little bit. We can come back to it later if we decide we need to raise the opacity or whatever. Uh, that's the beauty of working with these adjustment layers. Now we're going to go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer. Again, load that mask as a selection. We're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, black and white, and hit OK. Now, basically, she has gray hair. It doesn't look all that great, um, unless that's the effect we're going for, in which case we've nailed it. Uh, but we don't want that. What we basically want to do is just increase and give this kind of cool, mid-tony, contrasty punch effect. I don't even know how to describe it, but you'll just see it. It's a really cool thing to do to photographs in general. If you have a photograph, you just want to add some drama to, for lack of a better word. Just throw a black and white adjustment layer over it and set the blend mode to soft light. However, I'm going to save the soft light surprise for a second. What I want to do is increase the yellows a little bit and increase the reds a little bit. Okay, So basically we're just increasing the brightness. You can see pulling the reds way up. We're really starting to blow the hair out. I'm going to set it around 100. 106 to be exact is what I have. And then yellow around 70. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to set this to soft light. And you can see we'll shut the black and white layer off. Turn it on. We just get kind of a nice punchy helping achieve more of that you know blown out blonde look which is cool I like it however I just want to add a slight color tint to it and typically with blonde hair I found most of it if you're gonna add or introduce a color in the form of a photo filter which will actually end up throwing a photo filter on this in a little bit but what you want to do is pretty much find like a butter yellow something like this and then just desaturate that a good deal so desaturate it to the point where you've got a nice light tan. And you can see that's kind of the color I have here. So I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We've just added that tint. We can shut it off, turn it on. And you can see it's just a nice little effect there. And if you need to, you can drop the opacity or just drop the saturation of this. So I'd pull this down to about here just to get rid of some of that sort of tinting. All right, so we've got a nice little blonde effect there. It might be a little too yellow. We'll come back and address that later if it's still looking bad. But we're going to go ahead now, and we're just going to desaturate this just a little bit more by adding another hue saturation adjustment layer. So I've loaded my selection, layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. OK. And I'm just going to drop my saturation. Let's just punch in a number. Let's go negative 20 here. And just shut this off, turn it on. And yeah, I like that a lot more. We're getting rid of that sort of hard yellow edge. I like that a lot. So we're going to stick with negative 20. That's great. Um, and now we're actually going to add another hue saturation adjustment layer. I would just do this on this hue saturation adjustment layer, but we need to change the blend mode. So we're going to go ahead and go layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, 
and hit OK. And what we want to do, remember before we set our levels blend mode to screen, which kind of blew everything out, brightened everything up, we want to do the opposite here. We want to add a little bit of darkening. So we're going to go blend mode multiply. And that's going to really darken everything up. Now it's far too dark. Again, it's starting to look very fake again. And just bear with me and forgive these edges on this terrible masking job. Um, but it was quick. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead now. We've got this multiply blended hue saturation adjustment layer and I want to go ahead and I'm probably going to reduce the opacity in a minute but what we're going to do is we're going to go into the yellow channel here the yellows and I'm going to swing my hue to the left and kind of introduce more of an orangey color alright you can see definitely introducing some orange alright we're just affecting the yellows in the hair so we've got a lot of yellows going on there so there's plenty of yellows to affect and we also want to desaturate again a little bit more. Let's knock it down to about negative 15 or so. I'm going to try to make these numbers something that's easy for you guys to just dial in if you're following along. And then I want to brighten this up a little bit, as, as dumb as that sounds, because this is a, a multiply layer. I'm just going to punch in 20 for lightness. And we're going to leave that be kind of like that. Maybe come back to master here and punch up the saturation a little bit. And now we're good. We can just kind of leave the saturation hang around the center there. That should be good. And I just want to reduce the opacity of this. So I'm going to dial in uh, an opacity of, let's go with 50. 50 is a little too heavy still. I'm going to go knock it down to 35. 35 is cool. All right, so we're just taking off kind of that, that just, you know, I don't know, electric edge that the hair has where it's just, it's popping a little bit too much. Now we're going to add another levels layer, uh, adjustment layer, excuse me. And we're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, levels. And hit OK. Voila. Here we are. We're going to now essentially just bump up the reds and the blues again in the hair. So I'm going to go to the red adjustment layer. And I'm going to drag my gray point over to about 125, let's say. And again, we'll come back and tweak this if it's really looking messed up. Then I'm going to go to the blue adjustment layer. And I'm not going to mess with the histogram area, any of these sliders. I'm going to come down to the output levels, which is this one black slider and the one white slider. I'm going to drag the one white slider over until it's about 250. You can see if I drag it too much, it's going to introduce a ton of yellow. I'm just looking to drop a hint of yellow onto the highlights here in her hair. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to pop this over to about 250. It's a very subtle effect. But you can see it if you're, you, know, you probably can't really see it in the video, but if you're following along, it, it makes quite a bit of a difference. Um, so don't laugh at me too hard if you're just following along. Uh, and basically the last thing we're going to do is just add a photo filter to do just a little bit more color correction to this. Wow, this really looks bad down here. I really should have spent more time on the mask. Whoa. So I'm going to load this mask as a selection. Forgive me getting distracted there for a moment. And we're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, and photo filter. Hit OK. And right now we just have this warming filter. I'm actually going to take it on to color. And what I want to do is let's try increasing the density. Uh, you know what, actually? I'm going to dump this photo filter adjustment layer. Let's just get rid of that. I kind of oh, just got rid of the mask. Just going to actually delete the whole layer. Maybe we're not going to go with a photo filter. What instead I'm thinking, I'm looking at the hair here. We, I think we have enough red introduced just by the nature of this uh, levels adjustment layer when we went to the red channel there and swung that mid-tone slider over. So what I'm going to do instead is, again, load my selection. So I've got that mask baked right in. New adjustment layer, and I'm going to go Vibrance. I just think it's a little bit too saturated, so I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to dump some Vibrance, not necessarily saturation. I'm going to go with Vibrance. Vibrance is a little bit of a different desaturating effect. Uh, so I'm just going to knock it down to, let's go with negative 20 right off the bat. And actually, I like that a lot. You can see there, it just kind of has a, has a, I don't know, almost a pop art edge to it. Too, too much color. So just go in with the Vibrance and reduce it, and we have a much more natural looking blonde color. I'm going to tuck my layers panel right in here away. And then basically all we have to do is take these few adjustment layers, select them all. So I selected the top one, held down my shift key, selected the bottom one, and then Commander Control G, group them up, and you can rename this hair color or whatever you want. And there we have it. Boom, before, after, and you go from very dark hair to much, much lighter hair. And it's very easy. Once you do it a few times, you'll kind of get the, get the idea behind all the different adjustment layers and kind of the levels and the screening and the multiplying and the different hue and saturation levels. The key is you need to be able to go into your different color channels in your levels adjustment layers and your hue saturation adjustment layers and just affect the brightness of the different channels. So you're not just going in and wholesale brightening stuff up. That looks really bad. You start to lose contrast. You start to lose detail and all kinds of things like that. So what I recommend you to do is if you're following this tutorial, just go through and use the same exact settings I've used for your photograph, and then go back through and just tweak
tweak them. Go in and, and mess with them a little bit, mess with the opacities maybe of the different layers, the hue and the saturation amounts and all of that good stuff and you will find kind of that sweet spot for your photograph. And the more times you do it or the more you start to understand how it works, the easier and easier and easier it becomes. And it took us about 15 minutes to go through and change this hair color. It should only take maybe five or six minutes to go in and change some hair color um, and then add a couple more minutes to that maybe and for, for tweaks and adjustments and things and you'll be ready to rock. So that's it. We have converted some hair color here and I hope you've learned a thing or two. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out the site at www.tutvid.com. Follow me on Twitter at tutvid as well as the Facebook fan page, all of which are linked down in the description of the video. I will catch you guys later.